Hi Priyanka. Hi. You look like you're enjoying the College of Design courtyard today. Always. I enjoy the coming and going through around here and the way they set up the outdoor classrooms there with the tents. The college Georgia Tech campus is so much to offer. How should we best show it off to prospective students? Here comes Ellen, director of the MSUD. Let's take a tour with her. Hi, Ellen. How was your bike ride? Hi, Harini. It was great. I love, you know, riding the bike. I, I come, it's sort of double happiness. I'm always riding the bike. I get the exercise and it sort of feels fun. I come to school totally awake and I get to eat cookies if I've ridden the bike, so. Yep, that's amazing. <laughs> I mean, Atlanta has a lot of hills, but you get used to it. And we're, we're certainly known as a car city, but uh, my commute is, a, is about four miles. And hey, if I can do it, any of the students can. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Hi, how are you doing? Hey, Bianca, I'm good. How are you enjoying, enjoying oh, Atlanta in fall? Oh, I'm loving it. I love the colors. And I've been taking a lot of pictures and been going around campus. I'm sure everyone's enjoying that. Yeah. Uh, it's not yeah, something it's, new. Is it pretty different that it's from back home? Different. We do not have a fall there for sure. And we definitely do not have some beautiful colors. Yeah. This year has been a particularly good one, but it's always pretty good. Well, let's go in now. I, I want to, I need to go to my office and um, put down my bags. Um, so let's go on inside. Okay. So I love, the courtyard is a really, I love, it's a great kind of crossroads. You get all these people kind of coming back and through. And these two trees were actually planted in memory of the dean that hired me and his wife, which was a nice living memory. Come on inside. The, uh, the atrium isn't quite as busy as it used to be because the cafe has closed during the pandemic. We hope, really hope it opens up soon. But you, can, you get to see, um, this is kind of the heart of the College of Design. You get the industrial design studios are over here. There's a number of, um, there's constantly exhibitions and installations that people, that the different groups in the college are putting on display. One of my favorites is this bench. The bench is named Rapunzel for somewhat obvious reasons. So this was designed, fabricated, and installed by students under the direction of Monica Ponce de Leon, who is a dissipating uh, bench -led professor. So using our digital fabrication lab, and this is now, I don't even know how many years old, but um, we have, Georgia produces a lot of wood, a lot of pine trees, and we have, in the advanced wood products in particular, we really can do amazing things with. So um, Rapunzel is a pretty special uh, illustration of kind of how to begin to think in three dimensions. As, um, as she catches the light in the di at the different times of day. This was one of five installations, each with a different material, but um, she's the one that, that stayed, <laughs> became permanent. Let's go upstairs. computer labs, uh, the print and plot office, faculty offices, the suite of the architecture school offices are on this floor, and several of the undergrad studios. Um, and then the building on the east side has most of the city planning uh, faculty suite, uh, again, more classrooms. And then the School of Building Construction is just in, in another building right across the way with the real estate program. And the, uh, the, 
um, School of Music is in is in is in the College of Design, but they have some separate space with a little more acoustics <laughs> separation. Um, we are the arts at Georgia Tech, so lots of facilities here and a very pleasant place uh, to work. Although the MSUD students mostly are using this building for classrooms because our studios are up in the Hinman Building. studio uh, working away but I love how you can see how close Midtown Atlanta is that here we are in this quite green oasis of a campus that's very comfortable um, but we're really right next to a thriving and booming Midtown so basically Midtown is the neighborhood that's immediately to our east and then Home Park is the neighborhood to the west, lots of grad students, rent houses, and it's, it's sort of got smaller apartment buildings than Midtown, generally. Um, to our west, the, on the west side, there are a lot of historic, mostly uh, African-American neighborhoods that are now starting to see a lot of reinvestment and redevelopment, some of that welcomed, some of that really causing a lot of fears of gentrification and displacement. But a lot happening on the west side. Microsoft is building, they're bringing 20,000 employees big, to a big hub. Um, and then to our south is downtown Atlanta. And a, the Central Business District, another university, Georgia State University, so uh, the Atlanta University campuses, uh, lots of, it, it, we're really in a terrific location. Tell me something about your research. I'm sure the students would love to hear about it. So for over 25 years, I've been maintaining a database, no one else bothers, that tracks what I deem to be successful examples of whether it's dead malls, dying office parks, aging commercial strip centers and corridors into more sustainable places one way or another. And my co-author, June Williamson, and I wrote the, uh, the, our first book, um, published in 2009. And it, that, it, it, you know, so it, it sort of really helped a lot of communities figure out that it's possible to change these places. And suburbia has been so resistant to change. And yet, these properties are getting old. The heyday of building malls was the 70s, office parks was the 80s. Um, so a lot of communities are, really, are being hit with a lot of kind of dead, vacant, underperforming, asphalt-oriented, very unsustainable places. And now we get this great opportunity for a do-over. So we wrote uh, the, the database after this book. I think it helped inspire more communities to do even more. And the retrofits have been getting even more ambitious, much better designed. So we thought we had to write a second book. So the new book um, is over in the, in the studio. Oh, and I hope, I hope you guys, you guys should be using it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we'd love to hear about your research. And I'm taking your theory to the urban design class now. It's really helping me understand how the built environment is now. But would you like to tell us how it will be in the future? Well, of course, nobody knows exactly. You know, that's going to be up to what you guys do. <laughs> in the future. But yes, the course is, is mostly about, you know, let's let's talk while walk while we talk. So uh, the course is mostly in the reading the classics, Jane Jacobs, reading some Ian McCarg, some Calthor, oh, quite a lot of Rem Poolhouse, because they help tell us you know, help us, they help us really understand what's good and what's not working so well about our existing environment. And I think what, um, what, what, what I try to do towards the end of the course is get a lot more into what is that future, what are some of the challenges that your generation are facing, whether that is climate change, racial justice, uh, mega slums and informal settlements all you know there's so many issues out there to address and I want you guys to write the next classics books that help us figure out what to do
what to do with all this stuff. <laughs> I think it makes your day wonderful. So, Priyanka, this is your first semester, and it's not even done yet. So, you haven't been here that long, but what is what has kind of surprised you? What's been most different for you coming as previous? With, you've got a professional architecture degree, and now studying urban design. What's different about studying urban design? With urban design, I've realized that we're not only looking at design, we're also tying up real estate, finance, marketing, and other, other subjects, which really help to tell the bigger picture. In architecture school, we focused solely on design, but now we are talking about the real world experience that. So I think urban design has really helped that way. It's just not macro level. It ties up everything together to make a real problem. Yeah. Well, and I know Richard has got you really focused on hydrology. Yeah. Uh, sure. The water. Under, did you did you think you'd be looking and under learning about not storm water? Not at all. And in fact, I think it's very new for us. It's been a great learning experience. I've realized how much landscape architecture also is important. A very good part about our studio is we are not just students with an architecture background. We are people. We are students from different backgrounds, which really helps in the exchange of ideas and making a project very comprehensive. Yeah. I'm glad to hear it. Well, let's go up to the studio. So here we are, we've just left the main architecture courtyard, and the Hinman building is just halfway up that hill, a very short one minute walk. And then the coffee, more importantly, is in the library at the top of the hill. Very convenient. The sculpture is by John Portman, one of Georgia Tech's more less, very illustrious alumni uh, who was both an architect, a developer, and an artist. And uh, it gets lit up at night in a constantly changing array of, of colors and is really quite spectacular. We have a lot of John Portman buildings here in Atlanta. He's left a very important legacy and um, when you arrive you'll want to take a, a little bit of the, the Portman Atrium tour. I've really enjoyed giving you guys a little uh, look around the campus. I'm going to leave you here at the Hinman building where you, your studios are. I'm going to go to the library and get a cup of coffee. Thank you so much, Ellen. We really enjoyed the tour. What about you, Ellen? Yeah, thank you so much, Ellen. I really enjoyed it and we really need to head back to class now. <laughs> yes, you do. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.